Hi everyone, my name is Milan and welcome to part 3 of the permission authorization series. In this video, we're finally going to see how we can implement our custom authorization handler so that we can get authorization properly working in our API using permissions. Let's see how we're going to implement this. In part 1 of this series, we defined our has permission attribute and our permission enum and I said that we were going to implement authorization on our endpoints using this approach. In part 2, I showed you how we can configure the roles and permission entities and seed the initial values for the roles and permissions using Entity Framework migrations. And finally, in part 3, we are going to implement our custom authorization handler. So let's start with that right away. Inside of the infrastructure project, I'm going to add a new class, which is going to be our custom authorization handler. I'm going to name it permission authorization handler. We're going to use this class to implement the authorization handler class and add the authorization logic for handling permissions. So we need to inherit from the authorization handler class. If you take a look at this class, you can see that it has a generic argument which represents the authorization requirement for this authorization handler. An authorization requirement is just a class that's implementing the iAuthorization requirement interface so we are first going to need to add a requirement before we can implement the authorization handler. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to add a new class, which is going to be our permission requirement. What we need inside of the permission requirement is to implement the iAuthorization requirement interface. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. This interface is simply a marker interface and doesn't contain any properties but we are going to need to define a property on our permission requirement that is going to tell us what is the permission that we are handling for this authorization request. So let's add a simple property that is going to contain our permission. It's going to be a string property and I'm going to add a constructor so that we can initialize a new instance of our permission requirement. Now that I have our permission requirement, I can go back to the permission authorization handler and specify this requirement as the generic argument on the authorization handler class. And now we can go ahead and implement the missing members. We need to override and implement the handle requirement async method on the authorization requirement. And this is where we are going to take the permission on the permission requirement and see if the currently authenticated user has this permission and if so then we can allow him to continue the execution and access the endpoint that he is trying to access. The first thing that we are going to do is we're going to get the ID of the currently authenticated user. To do that we are going to access the subject claim on the JSON web token. So if I go to context I have access to the claims principle which contains an array of claims I can search this array of claims by calling first or default and we need to define which claim we are looking for and I'm going to look for a claim where the type is equal to the JWT registered claim names and if such a claim exists let's access the claim value. So this is going to give us the member ID of the authenticated member. Of course it can be null so I'm going to make it a nullable string. Let's try to parse our member ID by calling GUID try parse and I'm going to specify the member ID as the argument and capture the parsed member ID into an out variable. If try parse does not succeed, I want to just return from this method and I'm not going to complete our authorization requirement. To be able to return from this method, I need to make it asynchronous because later on I'm going to be awaiting something else. You're, you're going to see in just a moment. If we manage to parse our member ID, then our user is properly authenticated and we have a valid subject claim, which we're going to use to now see if the user has the permissions. The approach that I'm going to use here is one of two possible approaches for how you can verify if a user has the given permission. What I'm going to do is based on the parsed member ID here, I'm going to go to the database and return all of the permissions that this user has and if this set of permissions contains the permission from the permission requirement, then I can successfully authorize the user. There is a slight problem with this approach that I want to highlight because I want you to be aware of it. The authorization is going to trigger every time a user accesses your API. 
which means for every API call, we're going to be going to the database once. You can mitigate this by caching user permissions, but then you need to think about when you need to refresh this cache when a new permission is added or the user is assigned to a different role, for example. The alternative approach to this one would be to add the permissions of the user as claims in the JSON web token. So when we are handling the permission requirement, we would just scan those claims on the JSON web token and see if the permission from the requirement is present in the claims. This approach is more performant than accessing the database on every call, but the downside is if you have a long-lived JSON web token, you're not going to be able to refresh the permissions of the user when a new permission is added. So it's good to be aware of all the implementation options, and I'm going to show you both options. In this video, we're going to be calling the database to fetch our permissions. And in the next video in this series, I'm going to show you how you can add permissions as part of the claims in the JSON web token. And we're going to change this implementation to authorize the user based on the claims. I'm going to add a new service here which is going to fetch the permissions for us. I'm going to call it I permission service. And all I need inside of this service is to define one method, which is going to return a hash set of string. This hash set is going to represent the permissions for our member. So it's going to be a hash set of string, and I'm just going to call it get permissions async. I'll give it just one argument, which is going to be our member ID. If I go back to our permission authorization handler, I can't directly inject the iPermission service because I'm going to be registering the permission authorization handler as a singleton. So what I can do is I'm going to inject a service scope factory inside of this class. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to generate a constructor. And now that I have the service scope factory, inside of the handle requirement method, I can create a new service scope instance. So I'm going to say using i service scope. I'm going to place it inside of a scope variable. And we're going to create it by calling service scope factory create scope. Now that I have the service scope, I can resolve the i permission service. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to say i permission service and put it into a variable. And I'm going to say scope service provider and I'm going to say get required service I permission service so let's go ahead and fetch our permissions I'm going to say var permissions and I'm going to await the permission service get permissions async method and I'm going to pass in the parsed member ID as the argument this method is going to return a hash set of string containing the permissions for our member and we can use this to verify if the permissions contains the permission from the permission requirement. So now I can say if permissions, and I'm going to call the contains method on the hash set, and I'm going to pass in the requirement permission as the argument. So if it does indeed contain this permission, then I can say context, succeed, and I pass in the requirement that I want to succeed, which is our permission requirement in this case. So this completes our permission authorization handler, and now we need to add just a few more things to make this work properly. Let's start by implementing the I permission service. So I'm going to add a new class for the permission service implementation. Let's make it inherit from the I permission service interface. All right, and let's implement the interface. I'm going to inject the database context here because that's the simplest approach for me to fetch the permissions. Let's go ahead and inject this from the constructor. And inside of the get permissions async method, we're going to fetch the permissions for the member with the specified ID. So for the implementation, I'm going to say context. I'm going to access the member entity here. Then I need to filter the member by the ID. So I'm going to say that the ID is equal to the member ID that was specified as the argument to this method. And now I need to select the roles and permissions of this member. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to select the roles and the roles are going to contain the permissions. I need to add an include statement here so that it includes the roles and the permissions properly. So include roles and then include the permissions for those roles. So this is going to select the roles along with the permissions. Let's call to array async, for example, to materialize our array. To, I'm going to await this call and I'm going to capture the result inside of a variable. I'm going to name it roles. So because the user can belong to multiple roles, 
we get back a night collection of roll and we get an array of that so we have an array of arrays so i'm going to flatten this to finally get our hash set so this is how i'm going to do it i'm going to say rolls and then i'm going to call select many and i'm going to select the actual roll array so this is going to flatten from an array of arrays to an i enumerable of rolls then i need to call select many one more time and this is going to allow me to select the permissions on the role instance. And now we have an I enumerable of permissions. Now that I have a collection of permissions, I'm just going to select the names of these permissions. So I'm going to say select permission name. And now that we have a collection of permission names, the simplest approach is just to call to hash set on this. And we get back a hash set of permission names. So this takes care of implementing the permission service. So let's go to program.cs and configure the services that need to be configured. If I go here, I need to add a call to builder services add authorization. This is going to add the required services for authorization. I also need to add our permission authorization handler as a singleton. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to say add singleton. And the interface that we need to specify here is the I authorization handler. And we're going to specify our permission authorization handler as the implementation. We are still missing one important component here for everything to be configured properly. And before I show you what that missing component is, you know the drill already. I need you to smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos and you definitely don't want to miss the next video in the permission authorization series. So what is this mystery component that is missing? I'm going to go to the has permission attribute. If you take a look at the constructor, we are specifying the permission enum as the requirement for our has permission attribute, but we are converting that enum into a string and specifying it as the policy on the base constructor. This means that our permissions are actually treated as policies in terms of the authorization middleware. And we need to specify how this policy should be handled. Now it's going to be very cumbersome to specify a new policy every time we add a new value to the permission enum. So luckily there's a very elegant way to do this inside of the framework. I'm going to add a new class inside of the infrastructure project. And this is going to be our permission authorization policy provider. So let's go ahead and add this class. This class has to inherit from the default authorization policy provider. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to say default authorization policy provider. We need to define a constructor. This is how the constructor looks like. But the real reason we are inheriting from this class is to be able to override the get policy async method. We are going to use this method to see if a policy with this policy name here already exists. The policy name here is going to come from our has permission attribute. So if I await the base get policy async, I can capture the authorization policy in a variable. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So await base get policy async. Let's make the type explicit. You can see that this value can be null and this can be when the policy is not defined. So in that case, we're going to be creating a new policy, but let's first handle the opposite case. If the policy is not null, we are just going to return it and complete our method. And if we get to here, then our policy does not yet exist, so we need to create it. I'm going to create a new instance of the authorization policy builder, and we're going to use this builder to create our new policy. We need to add the requirements for our policy, and if you remember, we added our permission requirement earlier in the video. So we're going to use this class to create a new permission requirement. We're going to pass in the policy name as the permission name for our requirement. And we're just going to call build. And this is going to handle building our authorization policy. And the next time this method is called, our authorization policy is already going to exist. And we won't need to create a new one. So this is how you can automatically define missing policies for when you define new permission enum values and you don't even have to think about it. We also need to configure our permission authorization policy provider as a singleton. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to say builder services add singleton and I'm going to specify it as I authorization policy provider. 
and let's specify our permission authorization policy provider as the implementation. So this takes care of setting up the components for our custom authorization implementation. I'm going to go to the permission authorization handler and I'm going to place a breakpoint here and I'm going to start the application now and head over to Postman. I have the get member endpoint here uh, and I already prepared a fresh JSON web token. So if I send this request now, we should hit our permission authorization handler. So let's see if that is the case. So we hit our breakpoint inside of the permission authorization handler. And the first thing that we do is we get the member ID from the claims. And you can see that we get our member ID value. We parse that into our GUID and then we create a new service scope. Now we resolve our permission service. Now that we have our permission service, we can go ahead and fetch the permissions for the authenticated member. As you can see, we get back a hash set of permissions and it contains the two permissions, which are read member and update member. If I take a look at the requirement here, you can see that the permission in the requirement is read member. This means that permissions contains is going to return true. And we are going to call the context succeed and successfully authorize our user. So I'm going to press continue here and we're going to get the response from our API. I think this is a very robust and flexible implementation and I've used it on a couple of projects so far with a lot of success and I would recommend that you consider it for your project if you need this type of fine grain control on your particular endpoint. If you can get by with just simple authorization using roles, you are probably better off using that because it's going to be much simpler than this implementation. So while you wait for me to release the next video, take a look at these two videos that you can see on the screen now and until next time, stay awesome.